am I going to be opening the call centre again? Uh, the answer is possibly in the next few months. Um, I've got something I'm working on at the moment. Well, I've got three projects I'm working on at the moment. Uh, but what's happening with this contract work that's just come in, it actually releases some cash flow. Uh, once I get my bank back up to 10,000 euros, I will start investing some in new ideas. Um, my cash flow has been eaten away quite simply because people that had promises and we're going to do this and going to do that have either not done it or been very slow off the mark which is sort of like eating my time away as well as money um, so I need to get the money back up but there's been a few good ideas come forward I've also seen some serious problems that other people are having that I could step in and take control of uh, which would help their business but also Put us on, put us on the, uh, put us on the payroll uh, with quite a large footprint. Um, it takes me back to the original business idea when we originally did the data entry and data processing. Um, that's where the call center started, because I had a lot of stuff I brought from Oman. There's other stuff like that available, um, so I'm looking at that at the moment. But also, you've got to bear in mind, this is why I keep saying to people, don't worry about the call center, just get the ideas, get the clients, get what they need, get what they want, get what they ne we need to understand to meet their needs. Because opening a call center is easy. I can sit and waste $1,000 a week with people just sat there doing nothing. I can do that any day of the week. Making it make money takes time. Um, for the first month, I think it was about, it was at least the first two weeks, maybe the first month. Um, my call center agents were costing me money. I was losing money every week. But the reason it was making money is because the data processing at the time was actually bringing in the income because that was part of the call center. But the telemarketing was actually eating money uh, while we trained the staff up, etc. So don't assume that day one, bang, I'm in profit. Woo. Uh, you could be losing a thousand dollars a week. Uh, but you've got to bear in mind, I was earning a lot more than that per week anyway, so it was an easy, easy move. But, um, yeah, it's getting the right ideas. Now, people, people keep going on about telemarketing, telesales, somebody with a horse over there. Um, the thing with telemarketing and telesales, it's an industry I don't like. Um, I, I like service industry. I like actually providing a service of value. Um, I'd rather people were calling me up and saying my router's broke, how do I set it with a flow chart with a, have you switched it on and off again, rather than trying to sell somebody house insurance, for example. Because there is more, um, what do you call it, more of a need for things like resetting people's routers, more of a need for booking people's holidays, dealing with their problems with their website, etc then but also the people aren't as aggressive people aren't going don't call me again you've called me four times this week they're more likely to go ah oh, my router is not working um how do i fix it this thing's a piece of crap you know that sort of stuff so you can work with it's you know that's why a lot of agents actually prefer the incoming calls because it's when people call you they're a lot more mild um, so this is the big thing, the call center may be reactivated very soon. We're going to start it from Spain, because obviously I'm here anyway, April's here as well. Um, maybe I'll sort some work for somebody else who's here, and see how it goes. Uh, because at the end of the day, if people are making money, I'm happy, they're happy. And they can easily grow from that. The original call center started with two people and Excel spreadsheets uh, and some old PCs from our old call center um, and it grew from that. In Spain, I don't need to operate from Spain too much, it's just to get it started and once it's started work out what the companies need, get the processes right and then send somebody to the Philippines or go to the Philippines, doesn't really matter as long as whoever does it understands how to run the processes. I have two team leaders we should be able to get back that can train the staff up and with that every day it just builds up and builds up. 
Um, somebody was on about something the other day relating to another call centre, the uh, outsource centre, should we say, uh, that employs over 5,000 people. It is possible. It is really, really possible because there is so much administration and stuff that people need to do in business. But you need to get A, the decision maker, but the decision maker also to trust you. That's the hard bit. <laughs> That's why I keep saying to people, if you bring the you bring the business, we can sort the rest out because I'm committed to an idea that will work. Um, but people call me up and say, Matt, I want to open a call center. Can you help me with it? What do you want? Um, I can show you how to use a dial or whatever. I'm not bringing you customers. Um, you can go on my list for people that can do some of our work, but beyond that, I can't really do much for you. And it's not me being selfish, it's just that why would I use you? Um, the first thing you've done is approach me and say, can you do it for me? That doesn't sell. <laughs> that doesn't sell. And I know what I'm saying about uh, bringing the clients in. It's because I have the other end anyway. I already have the call center. I already have the infrastructure. I already have a group of call centers that can upscale on a very quick basis. Um, I already have that network. So I just need the clients and I'm working on this myself as well. And the reason I put this out is because I keep going back to the lifestyle choice that I don't want to keep working night and day. Um, I want to get to the point where somebody or five, seven, ten people can manage things not for me but with me. So that what happens is you're sat there going, right, well I'm dealing with the SEO for say Facebook or whatever. Uh, somebody's dealing with um, something like TripAdvisor going through all their um, comments and stuff, checking a bit of moderation, etc. And they take over separate departments and then eventually I step back. I'd rather take a smaller share than everybody else but have a bit of everything uh, than take a lot of one thing um, because I'd rather be overseeing and stepping back. I mean I'm not I'm not getting on too bad. Um, I'm still in my 40s but I want to be here. I don't want to be sat in the office. I don't want to be on the phone at 2 in the morning trying to solve problems in the Philippines. I don't want to have to go to the Philippines and have to come back to Spain and into the UK and everything else. I want other people to do that. I don't mind rolling out to get things moving and having the initial meetings etc. But I want competent people that can actually push the business um, because that's what you're paid for. You bring that in, we can pretty much do anything. I've got a long list of viable businesses that pretty much just need the investment. Um, now, if we can kickstart the call center, there are certain companies that would open up within the next 12 months after it. Uh, one of the first ones may be a fire alarm company. Uh, there's lots of little businesses that would actually spur on from this. So don't just assume, oh, it's just a call center, blah, blah, blah. If you become part of the group, then you're part of the group. But the only thing with that is everybody pulls in the right direction. If you don't pull in the right direction, you're not part of the group. Um, it's as simple as that. Because everyone wants a good lifestyle. Everybody wants to be able to stand here watching birds. Because <laughs> there's kites and all sorts. I've got flamingos, kites. I think I've seen a kestrel or something above me a minute ago. But the um, people want to relax. And with the right setup, we can relax. We put in the right attitudes into the business. Going away from this aggressive, people worried about their job attitude and into something that they're part of the company, which is actually a, more like a large family, is the way I like to run things. Um, people like working for me. It doesn't matter where or what contract. The guys I'm dealing with um, from next week, one of the guys I've worked with since 2007-2008 um, I've got guys from the Middle East that work for me out there and because of the, the way I treat everybody as an equal they want to work for me wherever I go. They, they're quite happy to go wherever I go. Um, it's, it's about relationships. But anyway, I'll cut this one short but please, you know, if you're thinking about a call centre think of what services you can provide even if you're not getting involved with me. 
think what you can produce. Don't just assume you can just open an office and everyone's just going to flock to you because they won't. All right, thanks for watching.